Hi. Welcome to the University of Guelph's 2021 Research Innovation Festival. I'm David Hobson, and over the last decade, I've helped over 100 researchers find ways to generate commercial impact using their research and innovations. So today, I am very lucky to be joined by one such impressive researcher, Dr. Emin Alan Verco. Dr. Alan Verco is a professor and a Canada Research Chair in the Human Gut Microbiome in the Department of Molecular and Cellular Biology at the University of Guelph. Welcome, Emma. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Emma, I remember you when you first joined the university over 10, I think it was 12 or 13 years ago. And uh, the microbiome was almost unknown at that time, or there were very few people working on it. You know, this was, it was certainly new to me at the time. And wow, yeah, have you accomplished a lot since then. <laughs> it's been a bit of a wild ride, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and very soon, if I understand, uh, your startup company, New Biota, uh, may be one of the first companies to have a new drug that can repair the human microbiome. You've made a lot of progress with this company. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to think so. We, we, uh, we're in a race. Uh, but I would like to think it's one of those races that everyone is a winner. Uh, the landscape is a really uh, tough landscape to be in, but it's a very broad landscape. There's a lot that we can do with microbiome. And so even if we can bring one drug to market, I think that that will be an incredible accomplishment. Emma, what's your biggest challenge as an academic entrepreneur? I think the biggest challenge that I faced and still face today is time. Uh, there's not enough of it. There's really not enough of it in a day. Uh, you know, I have kids as well. I have a family. Um, I uh, have spent a long time on the phone uh, outside of um, my everyday academic life. Uh, we've started up Nubo to China now. Obviously, the time difference there is, is uh, quite significant. So there have been several phone calls very late at night or very early in the morning. Um, I now spend a lot of time working with patent lawyers that never had to do before. So really it's time, but it's, it's all worth it. It's just time management. And so I think that's the, the single most difficult thing I've had to deal with. So managing new intellectual property um, is often a challenge and it's becoming more important every year. What's your strategy for managing your intellectual property? So I think one of the key things is actually something that, that uh, working with you has taught me over the years is that, is that really when I have a new idea, I need to bring it, you know, it's my responsibility to bring it to the forefront, to, uh, to disclose it, to make it available for assessment, to see whether it's something that could become intellectual property. And I think a lot of the time, um, uh, researchers like me, especially newer researchers, don't really understand the path uh, to IP uh, or the path from IP to patents, I should say. And so sit on things for a long period of time, uh, maybe even publish it before they even get to that point, by which time it's too late. You know, you need to, the process is that, that you need to come up with the idea, disclose the idea, uh, determine whether or not it is patentable and create a patent and then publish the, the work after that once the patent has been taken care of. And so getting that order in place for me was, uh, I think, the number one thing you taught me, David. Did you ever imagine that your work as a scientist would end up teaching you how to be an entrepreneur? Never. <laughs> Never. In, in fact, I think... Um, at one time, I, I, I thought that the business world was never going to be for me. You know, I'd grown up in uh, my childhood. My, my dad is a businessman. My mum's a businesswoman. I'd grown up in an, an environment where that was the norm. I think uh, I'm the only scientist in my family, a little bit of a black sheep from that point of view. And I think a lot of people looking at me uh, in my family thinking, why is she doing this? You know, what's the benefit? Um, uh, because to them, benefit is only measured in dollars or pounds, as, as we should say that. Um, but I think um, uh, I'm, I'm very happy the way things have turned out because there's a, a lovely balance now between my academic life where I can actually uh, explore ideas that come to me usually in the dead of night or while I'm in the shower. I can explore them in a lab and do things with them. 
Um, and, uh, and then just sometimes, just sometimes, there's an idea that has enough longevity that it might make it into the clinic and actually make a difference in someone's lives. And that drives me. Now I've done it, or we we're all very much on the path of doing it. I can't imagine it being any other way, honestly. So at first blush, it seems like supporting goals of entrepreneurship and scientific you know research are, are kind of in conflict but you you seem to have managed them very well so how would you define success in your research program uh in my academic research program success is always measured in terms of publication in terms of graduation in terms of you know an interesting research program that uh that ignites the um, imaginations of, of other researchers and so you know I've been very blessed that I work in an area that people really understand you know that everyone has a gut everyone poops so everyone kind of gets it when I say I'm trying to sort of fix the problems of the of the, of the gut microbiome <clears throat> and then when it comes to the company I think the great benefit there is that actually moving this technology into the clinic um, has such enormous um, uh, uh, potential to help people, and 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 that makes me feel amazing. You know, if 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 we if the if a drug that started off as a brainchild in one of my neurons can save someone's life, just one person's life, then I consider that to be absolutely incredible. And uh, and the, the drugs that we're producing, you know, surprise us more and more. Uh, uh, the more the, the trials that we do um, about how we're on to the right uh, we're on to the right approach here. So I think that you know it's like a snowball. It kind of uh, starts as a tiny nucleus and then gathers and becomes huge. And uh, uh, but that's not just me. That's the people that I work with. Uh, and you know you start off with an idea, a germ of an idea, and it builds and builds and uh, then becomes a juggernaut of an idea. And that's uh, many people's efforts and uh, and help along the along the way. Thank you very much, Dr. Alan Verco, for sharing your fantastic journey through the technology transfer process all the way to a startup company. I think your research will end up making a very positive impact on millions of people. That's my prediction. And uh, this really is the new frontier of modern medicine. In closing, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in today. And don't forget to watch this year's startup companies pitching to win $10,000. We strongly encourage everyone to watch all the pitches and vote for the People's Choice Award prior to watching the Griffin's Lair finale, which will be occurring on the 19th of May.